In this video I'm going to show you how to make the standard simple step flashings without any specialist tools required. This type of basic step flashing is used to cover lead soakers that abut a chimney or wall either in slate like this or on plain tiles like these. If you don't yet know how to fit lead soakers and you need to, please check out my how to fit lead soakers video and the link is available at the end of the video or via a link in the description bar. If you're fitting step flashings to profile tiles though, or for instance over a conservatory like this, you will again find a dedicated link in the description bar for this. Here I'm going to be fitting new step flashings to this chimney stack, but if you're fitting them to any other brick wall, the chances are it will be exactly the same technique. The first place to start is to measure the length of the step flashings required. Here it's around the 1.2 meter mark or 4 feet on the face of this chimney. However, I also need some additional flashing to wrap around the front face of the brickwork at the bottom just here. So I'm going to have to add on an additional measurement of 200 millimeters, meaning the length is now 1.4 meters. Now lead expands and contracts and the continuous section of lead, especially a long thin one like a step flashing, may prematurely crack. So I would recommend never fitting in lengths longer than 1.2 metres in one section. Armed with that knowledge and the fact it's going to make a better video, I'm going to be fitting this in a much easier to handle and work with 800 millimetres. Next we need the height of the flashing. Most of the time roofers will try to make this about 150 millimetres or 6 inches and I'm no exception to the rule so that's what I'm going for as well. Luckily this chimney has already had previous step flashings on it so the mortar has already been chased out to a height of 150 millimetres across the course of the bricks as indicated by the arrows but if it wasn't this is how you could do that. Firstly, lightly scratch a faint line onto the face of the brickwork with a nail or a bolster. Using this faint scratch line as a guide, you can now see any mortar that sits between the top of the lead soaker and just outside the scratch line between the bricks. This mortar needs removing. This can be done manually with a hammer and bolster or a screwdriver or with a diamond tipped mortar rake like this. Here I have removed the safety guard and dust extraction so you can see the process clearly. This is for the benefit of the video, do not do this yourself and always wear eye protection and a dust mask. Now we know the mortar is raked out and ready to receive the step flashings and we have the height of 150mm and the length of 800mm. It's now just a matter of simply cutting a section of milled lead this size. And here we are with that section of new milled lead fitted loosely in place. Here you can see I've temporarily pinned the lead into position ready for marking. This means the lead will not move around while we do the important step of marking the face of the lead ready for cutting. The first mark we need to make is the waterline mark and typically this is just above the lead soaker height. By using a small off cut of roofing batten or scrap timber, lightly scratch a line just above where the top of the lead soakers finish, typically about 5 or 10 millimetres or thereabouts. As you can see, I've highlighted the line with Photoshop to make it easier to see, and this sets the maximum depth for your steps and stops you cutting too deep. It also gives you a water line of around 65 millimetres. Next, using the same piece of timber, mark between your water line or soaker line and where the brick workhorse intersects with it to form a step. These are normally marked somewhere between 60 and 45 degree angles. What I normally do though is have a look around, see what else is on the property and try and replicate it. That way your version won't stand out or look different in any way. Now just carry on and mark in the rest of your steps on your step flashing. By using the same bit of wood again, mark the top of the bricks horizontally where the lead flashings fold over the edge of the brickwork underneath like this. 
Of course, rather than this piece of wood, you could use a level, but a lot of the time I find on these old houses that it may not be level, so I'm better off with a piece of wood anyway. Now, at the very bottom of the chimney or brickwork here, it's difficult to work out the folded return. So I just scratch a mark up in the air that allows me plenty of excess lead for trimming off later, or you can leave the whole flap of lead on if you like and mark that later. Finally, we scratch on the depth of the lead work into the chase. Simply add the amount of depth that you want by scratching that size above your horizontal fold line. In my case, on this old brickwork, it will be 15 millimeters to match the original. It's possible now you'll have quite a few faint scratch lines and to save any confusion during the cutting process later, scratch out any of the scrap sections like this. By doing this you will know exactly which sections to cut out and put on the recycling pile. In fact, using Photoshop, let me just remove some of the confusing bits so that you understand it a bit better. Firstly, I'll remove all the sections that will be cut out and recycled. Now I remove the faintest line that we made right at the beginning that sits above the lead soakers underneath called the water line. Now you can clearly see with the mark sections removed and the folds waiting to be made how this flashing will fit neatly into place. This is the actual flashing shown after cutting and you can still see the faint scratch lines on the surface. Don't worry about that, in one or two weeks after a rainfall they will be totally invisible. It's just a matter now of folding it on the lines that we marked earlier and that's done like this. The flashing will then slot into place like this. If we look at the bottom of the lead, you can see why I left this upward shaped cut here. By making a snip at the corner point, it allows us to fold round the lead section around the corner of the brick like so. This allows us to make the final cut and fold and remove the scrap lead. Now it's just a matter of fixing the step flashing in place with some lead chocks. Again, if you don't know how to do this, visit the link at the end of the video or in the description bar. For the last section of lead, just repeat the process, measuring from the top to the overlap point shown here. Now it's just the same procedure of marking, cutting and bending that we did earlier and you should have a full set of step flushings. Once pointed up, not only will they look superb, but they will provide decades of leak-free service. Well, that's it for another video. I hope this has proved useful in some way, and thanks for watching.